So one thing I've always wanted to do is solve a mystery. Like that guy who solved the mystery of why all the celebrity photos on Wikipedia are so terrible. Apparently it's a copyright thing. So today I thought we would solve the mystery of a few mysterious flags I have seen recently. As longtime viewers of this channel know, I like to consider myself a bit of a flag spurt. So when I see a flag I do not immediately recognize, it tends to weird me out a bit. Like say the other day when I was at the marina, as one often is, and I saw this weird flag hanging off a boat. And then a few days later when I was walking home from my parents house, I saw the flag again, but this time on somebody's balcony. Or at least I thought it was the same flag. When I got home and compared my notes, I saw that they were actually subtly different. Like how one was a triangle. So needless to say, I had to solve these flag mysteries. Since the first one had a British style crown on it, I figured it must be some obscure Canadian thing. British style crowns are common in Canadian iconography. So I Google image searched Canada triangle flag and got this, which was actually pretty close. This picture was featured on flagsvancouver.com and was given as an example of a custom boat or burgy flag, which was a term I was previously not familiar with. But apparently triangle boat flags are this whole other rich subculture in the flag world very popular with boating clubs in particular. And I learned that it was common for burgy flags of boating clubs within the nations of the British Commonwealth to have crowns on them. And then I'm like, does Vancouver have any prominent boating clubs? Ah yes, the wonderfully snobbish Vancouver Yacht Club. So I searched Vancouver Yacht Club Burgi, and here it is, solved. Now the other one was way harder. I googled everything I could think of and tried really hard to mine my existing reserves of flag knowledge for any leads. It looked like it had some sort of lion on it, but the lion wasn't done in the style of the lions you see on any European flags or the lion on the flag of Ethiopia or Iran or Sri Lanka. So then I thought, well, maybe it was like a soccer flag or a cricket flag or a rugby flag or like the flag of some religious group, but no luck. So alas, I had to cave. I had to ask Reddit. A small flag seen flying outside a house here in Vancouver. Mass produced, attached to one of those plastic poles you'd affix to a car. Can't seem to find anything on it by Googling. Is it religious? Sports team, maybe? To which Leah bluntly answers, Primorsky Cry. Now I had never heard of a Primorsky Cry before, but apparently it is a province in Russia, or whatever it is the Russians call the various things that their country is divided up into. Republics or oblasts or whatever. Primorsky is located way over here, on the furthest eastern part of Siberia. And as a result, the thing on the flag is not in fact a lion, as I had originally thought, but a Siberian tiger. The Primorsky vans are apparently really into tigers as their go-to patriotic symbol. They even have a special Tiger Day, which I mean makes sense. If where I lived had tigers, I'd probably play that up too. On to the next mystery. Now, as you might be aware, if you are a big American corporation, the popular thing to do these days is to suck up to the Chinese and not do anything that would offend their delicate Chinese snowflake sensibilities. If you annoy the people of China, they might not want to buy your products, and who can risk alienating a billion potential consumers. So a high profile example of this came a few months ago when the trailer for Top Gun 2, Top Gun Maverick was released. It was revealed that out of sensitivity to our Chinese betters, Tom Cruise's jacket would no longer feature little flag patches of China's enemies. See, in the original movie, Tom Cruise has this cool dude jacket with all these little patches on the back. And one of them is this patch here, which says Far East Cruise 6364 USS Gavelston. And then the flags of the US, the UN, Japan, and Taiwan. Patches like this did in fact exist at one time in the real world. They were issued by the US Navy to represent the different missions that various aircraft carriers went on, and they'd feature the flags of whatever American allies participated as well. But anyway, in the new Top Gun movie, or at least the trailer, Tom Cruise wears the exact same jacket with all of the same patches, except that the Navy mission patch is slightly different. As you can see, the Taiwanese and Japanese flags have been swapped out for these new weird flags. Now this of course caused a lot of controversy. It looked like the studio was bending over backwards to appease China, 
a country that does not recognize the sovereignty of Taiwan and might not look too favorably on a hero who likes the Japanese either. But I was very curious as to what these new flags even were. Obviously they were picked because they look quite similar to the flags of Japan and Taiwan, but were these actual flags of actual places? or just made up Hollywood nonsense. Well, a bit of Googling revealed that the studio has actually made up this whole canonical storyline explaining what these flags are and why they're actually okay. You can even buy an updated patch for your very own Tom Cruise jacket if you so desire. So basically this new patch is supposed to commemorate the mission that Tom Cruise went on in the first film, which is why it now says Indian Ocean Cruise 8586 instead of Far East Cruise 6364. And the new flags are not actually flags of places, but flags relating to other things that Tom Cruise did in the first movie. So the Japanese flag was replaced with this made up F-14 Tomcat flag, because that was the kind of jet he flew. And the Taiwan flag was replaced with this made up VF-1 flag, since that was the name of his unit. Any resemblance to other flags living or dead is purely coincidental. Flag mystery solved. Okay, now this next one is interesting. When I was in Toronto recently, I saw this sign advertising Admission Hub, which is some sort of company that helps foreign students come to Canada. And you can see it has all of these different flags of all the different nationalities they're trying to appeal to. Japanese, Vietnamese, Brazilian, Mexican, Chilean, and uh... Now, thanks to my time spent using multilingual ATM machines here in Vancouver, I of course knew that the words under this flag meant Chinese, but this was obviously not the flag of China. So what did the words on it say? Well, this was easy enough to figure out using the Google Translate iPhone app. You ever use this? It's like science fiction. You just point your phone's camera at any foreign word and it will do an instant translation on the screen. Anyway, the words on the flag just say student immigration, which is the same thing it says under all of the other flags. So what's going on here is yet another example of a China-induced controversy. A lot of foreign students who come to Canada come from Chinese-speaking countries like Taiwan and Hong Kong, in addition to mainland China. And ordinarily, when you would want to represent that entire linguistic community, you would just pick one of those flags and use it to stand in for it, in the same way that we use the Stars and Stripes or Union Jack to represent English speakers, and no one really thinks much of it. But of course, you cannot do that with the Chinese-speaking world. The Taiwanese or Hong Kongers would get very offended if you told them to identify with the flag of Red China, while the Red Chinese themselves would get equally offended by any flag other than their own attempting to represent the Chinese community. So instead we get this lame thing, the student immigration flag. I think I'm gonna try to see if I can get one of these things printed up because it is just such a wonderfully lame embodiment of the geopolitical tensions of our age. Flag mystery solved. All right, so lastly we have this flag, which I saw someone displaying on their porch back on Canada Day. Now at first glance, this looks a lot like Canada's pre-1965 flag, the so-called Red Ensign. But even though the Red Ensign had gone through a lot of different revisions, as far as I knew, there had never been a version of it with a circle and a little beaver in it. So what was the deal? Well, as I've said before, people in Canada who like the Red Ensign flag tend to be pretty backwards looking people. They also tend to be very nostalgic for the time in which Canada Day was not called Canada Day, but rather Dominion Day. So putting two and two together, I thought I would search for Dominion Day flag and see what flowed forth. And wouldn't you know it, first match. It took me to the website of Barkerville, which is this very historic ghost town here in British Columbia. I should really do a video about it someday because it was this important city during the gold rush times and played a big role in the development of this province. And apparently it was also the city that came up with the whole idea of of Dominion Day. See, British Columbia is unique because it is the only part of Canada that was ever technically under US authority. Britain and America could not initially decide on how to divvy up the Pacific Northwest amongst themselves. So until 1846, what is now British Columbia was initially under joint British and American rule as part of what was known as the Oregon Territory. And even after British Columbia was cleaved off, it continued to attract a lot of US settlers and retained a large American population. So according to the Barkerville people, British Columbia's American residents used to celebrate Independence Day every July 4th, which made the Canadian residents jealous. So the Canadian residents made up their own holiday called Dominion Day to be celebrated three days earlier 
on July 1st, which was the anniversary of the signing of the Canadian Constitution. And since Canada didn't have a flag in those days, they made up this what? jazzy number, so they would have something to compete with the Stars and Stripes. And I must say, this story of insecurity and one-upmanship behind our national holiday is the most delightfully Canadian thing I've ever heard. Final flag mystery solved. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you've ever solved a flag mystery of your own. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, and I will see you all next week. <laughs>